friends we are discussing gas solid catalytic reactions and we looked at in depth a scenario where a first order irreversible isothermal reaction takes place in a catalyst which is of a slab geometry. I also mentioned that we will relax all these restrictions one by one and in last session we looked at relaxing the condition of geometry and saw that even for spherical geometry, even for cylindrical geometry or for any irregular shape. If we define the Thiele modulus appropriately, then the relationship between for, uh, the effectiveness factor and Thiele modulus for a first order reaction is almost unique, maybe few percentage point uh, difference, but under the extremes of reaction controlling the whole process or diffusion controlling the whole process, the behavior is unique that is effectiveness factor is 1 if reaction is controlling the process and effectiveness factor goes as inverse of Thiele modulus if diffusional limitations are controlling. Let us now relax the constraint uh, on the order of reaction saying that instead of uh, considering only first order reaction what happens if the kinetics is more general and we will take a look at this situation today. So, coming back to our diffusion mass balance uh, equation, the mass balance equation is same as same as before. That is, if we are if we are considering, uh, let us say, reaction A going to B in a slab geometry. So now we understand that we don't have to worry about so, whether it is a slab geometry or whether it is a cylindrical geometry or for that matter any irregular shape. So, our mass balance equation for slab geometry for example, is as shown over here d e a d square d z square of c a is equal to r of c a with the boundary conditions that c a is equal to c a b at the outer surface namely z equal to l. So, let me draw a sketch here. This is my inner surface in a center point, this is my outer surface. So, concentration at this location over here is C a b and then at the center point the flux is 0 because of symmetry condition. So, these are the boundary conditions and the mass balance for diffusion reaction equation. Now, we solve this for R equal to K V into C A that is the first order kinetics. So, now let us see how what we can do if the kinetics is not first order, but any general reaction rate R of R of C A. To address this, we will now uh, follow the following following method. Let us first of all define V as D A E D C A dz. Okay, let us let us define this uh, uh, v. So, in terms of v, if we go back to our mass balance equation 1, we can write that equation 1 as d v dz equal to r of c a. Right? And our definition of definition of V says that d c a d z is equal to 1 over d a e into V. Now, so this is my equation 2, this is my definition of V. So, we have these two equations. So, now if I if I combine these two equations, if I combine these two equations that is equation 2 and equation 3, I can alternately write d c a d v that is just 3 by 2 d c a d v is nothing but 1 over d a e v 
by r of c a and what is the what is the boundary conditions for these two equations? V is equal to 0 when z is equal to 0 and C a is equal to C a b when z is equal to L. Okay. We are trying to now look at a combination of these two equations as written over here, which we can integrate and will give us V square by 2 is equal to integral C a 0 to C a b d a e of C prime. Let us say that diffusivity is also a function of. So, we have just integrated this equation 4 and use the boundary condition that v is 0 at z equal to 0. This C a 0 is nothing but some concentration at that is C a 0 is C a at z equal to 0. We do not know that value, but let us say that that concentration is C a 0. So, what we are saying is in our catalyst, I know the concentration here is C a b. I do not know what the concentration here is. There is going to be diffusion and reaction. Let us call this concentration C a 0. So, if you do that, then I can write my, my v square in this particular particular manner or in other words I can write this equation 5 in an equivalent equivalent form namely V is equal to 2 integral C a 0 to C a b d a e raised to half okay. and this is nothing but d a e d c a d z as we defined earlier. Let us work with this equation little more and integrate this one more time that is we have d z will be d a e d c a by v. Let us keep it in terms of v because it is little co uh, uh, complicated equation. So, instead of repeating it, we will keep it in the in the in the same term. So, if we integrate both the sides between the limit 0 to L with concentration limit C a 0 to C a b, we will get L equal to integral C a 0 to C a b d a e d C a by by v. So, this equation gives us where v is this particular particular term over here. So, the last equation over here tells us what is this C a 0 implicitly? We do not know what is this integral value is because that is not a simple equation, it is little involved equation. We do not know what that, that equation is, but we know implicitly. That is in this integral, if we know the length of your uh, uh, slab width that is the catalyst uh, half width, then we, we know the C a 0 value implicitly. Okay. But we are interested in knowing what is the effectiveness factor and what is what is the what is the Thiele modulus. So let's define effectiveness factor eta as R observed by R if the concentration is C a b same as same as uh, uh, before. And using the similar manipulations that we did earlier, we can write this as. which is which is actually this term is nothing but this term is nothing but v at z equal to l okay so if we put all those things together we will get an equation for 
effectiveness factor as raised to half. All, all we have done is we have used the definition of eta coupled it along with the value of v at z equal to l and we get this particular particular expression. So, we know what is the effectiveness factor, but we do not know what is the what is the Thiele modulus and to do that definition to get the definition of Thiele modulus for a generalized uh, uh, kinetics. Let us use an idea that we saw earlier for, for a first order reaction. The idea was that the idea was as follows. If you look at eta versus Thiele modulus plot, the plot looked something like this with Thiele modulus being very high that is when you have diff diffusion limitation eta was 1 over Thiele modulus. Okay. So, let us now define the Thiele modulus for the generalized kinetics as Thiele modulus is 1 over eta at Thiele modulus being very large and this gives us the definition of definition of uh, uh, Thiele modulus. So, now if we take this definition of eta and what is the meaning of Thiele modulus being very large that is the diffusional limitations are very strong. So, what happens when diffusional limitations are, are very strong? For example, uh, if for the first order reaction, we saw these results earlier that is when Thiele modulus is very large, the concentration of reactant at the center point is almost 0. So, let us make use of this observation and say that when Thiele modulus is, is very large, my center point concentration is going to be going to be 0. Now, it need not be actually physically 0 because if the reaction is reversible then we can have the center point concentration as equilibrium concentration that is at very large uh, uh, Thiele modulus values we will get concentration lower limit or lower limit on concentration as equilibrium concentration. So, C A B to C A E and if the reaction is irreversible C A E is nothing but 0 and that is what we saw for a first order kinetics when the reaction was irreversible. So, if you do all this we get now that is what we have is effectiveness factor value eta. Now, put C A 0 equal to C A E or the equilibrium value and the appropriate rearrangement will give us the effectiveness factor for a generalized kinetics as volume of the particle to spherical uh, surface area of the particle. This, this takes care of the geometry of the catalyst pellet R of C A B by square root of 2 in So, this gives us now the definition of Thiele modulus for spherical uh, for uh, uh, generalized generalized kinetics. Let us see how this simplifies for first order reaction. So, for first order reaction for first order reaction uh, our R of C A is K V into K V into 
C A. Okay. So, if we if we or uh, if we put all this individual individual terms assuming diffusivity is constant, then uh, and for slab geometry for example, V p by S p is L, this is K v into C A C A b divided by square root of square root of 2 into d a e d a e uh, into uh, sorry this should be minus half because that is inverse. So, d a e raised to minus half into integral first order reaction C a b r of C prime. So, k v into C prime d C prime raised to minus half and if you if you now simplify this simplify this uh, uh, relationship we will be left with l into k v by into c a b by square root of 2 into 1 over square root of d a e into 1 over k v raised to half into square root of 2 by C A B this integral. So, these terms will cancel out and we are left with the definition of Thiele modulus which we got which we got earlier. What if the reaction is general uh, nth order kinetics? what if reaction is general nth order kinetics. So, if we substitute now r equal to k v into C A raise to n, we will get Thiele modulus equal to L square root of k v by d A E into n plus 1 by 2 into C A B raise to n minus 1. This is our Thiele modulus for a general general kinetics. And if we now look at the behavior of Thiele modulus versus effectiveness factor, Thiele modulus, Thiele modulus phi versus effectiveness factor eta for power law kinetics that is r is equal to k v c a raise to n and for different values of n 1 half 0 2 3 etcetera. Once again we see that two limiting cases the behavior for for effectiveness factor and Thiele modulus is unique diffusion control reaction control, reaction control. So, both these both these uh, extremes you have the same behavior of Thiele modulus and eta. Whereas, during the transition period there are variations for different kinetics, but the behavior qualitatively is very much very much uh, uh, similar. So, this is how diffusional resistances or mass transfer phenomena interferes with the kinetics or chemical reaction to produce results which are different than if the diffusion was not playing a uh, any, any role. Now, when you actually do the experiment, you do not know a priori whether diffusion is playing a role or not. So, that is something that we would like to find out. So, to find out what is the criteria, but before we do that let us look at what happens if the diffusional limitations are there. How does your measurements give you incorrect or falsified falsified uh, data. Okay. So, to look at that first let us look at an example and, and uh, to illustrate what do I what do I mean by falsification of uh, kinetics. Now, 
this is a this is a experimental result of cracking of cumin and this is the rate of cracking as measured experimentally so rate observed as a function of pressure now in reality this cracking of cumin is a zero order reaction so kinetics is namely c r s to zero or simply a constant k v pressure is a indication of concentration so now if you examine this observed rate data we see that as we are increasing the pressure the rate is increasing from a low value and reaching a saturation point this is a behavior of a zero order reaction that is rate is some constant kv but what about this regime clearly there is something else that is happening that is the true kinetics is zero order but if you measure this data and try to determine the kinetics you will conclude that this is some kind of a saturation kinetics that is the kinetics is actually something like this we saw this in langmuir adsorption isotherm behavior so one may conclude that this is the kinetics if we just try to fit the rate uh, uh, experimental data to some model equation but this is not the true kinetics true kinetics is this zero order reaction so that means so there is some falsification of kinetics as we measure it how, do, how why, why do we get falsification of kinetics let's try to first look at look at uh, uh, that aspect so what we are saying is that we observe rate and we measure bulk concentration so we measure both these quantities and because there are some diffusional limitations or there is a likelihood of diffusional limitations we don't actually see the true kinetics so there is a falsification of kinetics so how do we how do we how do we try to try to uh, explain that so let's go back to our r observed which is effectiveness factor into r of cab so when you are in the reaction control regime when phi value so how do, how will this equation behave when phi is less than 0.3 let us say eta is close to unity so r observed is same as r of cab so you will measure the observed rate which is the true kinetic rate but what happens if phi value is greater than 3 then eta is 1 over 1 over phi so let's try to see what is the implication of this particular particular behavior okay now first we'll try to see how the order of reaction may get falsely reported now if you recall what is the order of reaction earlier we said order is d ln r of ca by d ln ca right this is how we defined our order this comes from the fact that if rate is defined as crs to n then this n is nothing but d ln r of ca d ln ca so now let us let us try to see what happens if diffusional limitations are there so let's now say that observed rate will be first of all d ln r observed by d ln cab because my observed rate is r observed concentration is concentration is cab so now let us let us uh, uh, go back to our equation my r observed is eta r cab so i'll take a log of this 
because I want to see how the ln are observed changes. So, this is ln eta plus ln r of C A B. So, this equation coupled with my definition of observed order gives me ln r observed is ln eta by d ln C A B plus d ln r of C A B d ln C A B. So, now I can I can write d l n r of C A B d l n C A B as n. So, this will be n plus l n eta uh, d l n eta d l n C A B. Okay. So, now why should eta change as C A B? Because if you recall our definition of Thiele modulus is a function of C A B, eta is 1 over 1 over Thiele modulus if diffusional limitations are strong. So, eta depends upon C A B. So, if you now put this information into this equation, we will get n observed as n plus n minus 1 by 2 d ln eta d ln phi. All, all I have done is instead of writing d d ln C A B, I wrote this as d phi d ln C A B d ln eta d phi d ln phi and we get this particular relationship. So, now how does how does eta varies with phi? We know eta varies with phi by minus 1 that is ln is 1 over phi. So, d ln eta d ln phi is minus 1. So, for a power law kinetics you will get observed rate as n plus 1 by 2 where n is the true kinetic kinetic rate. This has several implications. For example, let us take a first case that we have seen in depth. When n is 1 first order kinetics n observed is same as n the true order of the order of the reaction. But what if n is 0? Then n observed is half and in fact, if we go back and look at this behavior, this, this particular behavior is an part of R actually effectively R observed, R observed is actually K V C A raised to half is actually this behavior, true kinetics is this behavior. So, this is my true kinetics, this is my diffusion limitations, strong diffusion limitations. So, the actual behavior is a combination of combination of these two. Now, how is it related to related to uh, uh, the, 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 the pressure? Now, if you look at look at our Thiele modulus definition for a zero order kinetics, it turns out Thiele modulus is inversely proportional to pressure. So, lower the value of pressure, higher is the value of Thiele modulus using our idea of generalized Thiele modulus. So, lower is the pressure, higher is the value of Thiele modulus, higher is the pressure, lower is the value of Thiele modulus, true kinetic control diffusion diffusion control.
let us look at another another example of of how kin kinetics get falsified. This is again same cracking of cumin, but now the observed rate as a function of 1 over 1 over t having particle sizes which are increasing in this order. This is 0 0.0056 centimeter, this is the second one is 0 0.029 and so on. Now, what do we see in this figure? We see in this figure that r observed versus 1 over t is a straight line, this is a ln plot. So, this is ln and that comes from the fact that r is k v into concentration let us say, in this case concentration raised to 0 and k v is a function of temperature namely let us say that Arrhenius rate form. So, if we now plot ln k v versus 1 over t or ln r versus 1 over t, we will get a straight line with slope equal to minus e by r is the slope from which we get our activation activation energy. So, if we now look at this figure, let us say that for a for a value of small radius to a large radius, we see that the slope is decreasing, our lines are becoming less steeper and steeper. That means, the activation energy activation energy is is decreasing. This is again a falsification of of uh, uh, kinetics and in fact, if we do the same exercise we did for the uh, order of a reaction, we will get the activation energy, the activation energy observed is true activation energy into 1 plus half d ln eta d ln phi. So, under the case of strong diffusional limitations, the activation energy observed will be actually when phi is greater than 3 e by 2 and this is in fact, what we are seeing here. When the particle radius is very large, the diffusional resistances are strong. So, Thiele modulus is high and that at that point, we get the slope which is the smallest roughly half of what when the kinetics was controlling. This will happen when the particle size is small. So, this is the kinetics, true kinetics, this is the diffusion, diffusion effect or falsification because of because of uh, diffusional diffusional limitations. Now, experimentally how do we determine whether our reaction is in a diffusion regime or in a in a kinetic kinetic uh, uh, regime. Now, qualitatively we can argue and find out in the following following manner. Let us let us go back to our our uh, discussion and uh, we, we, we said that we define observed rate as eta r of C a b okay. and we also know that eta versus Thiele modulus behavior is of something of this kind. Now, we also know Thiele modulus is L square root k v by d a e. So, now suppose we do experiments by changing Thiele modulus. How do we change Thiele modulus? By choosing different values of catalyst L 1, L 2, L 3 and so on. So, instead of eta versus phi, my experimental measures as L on x axis. So, different values of and I measure the rate of reaction at different catalyst half width. 
So, I am maintaining all other conditions same, bulk concentration is same, temperature is same uh, and uh, all other characteristic of catalyst are same except the half width is different. Then what kind of behavior will we get? Phi and L same that is phi is nothing but L times some constant. So, as we change L, R observed will change as eta changes because this all conditions are same. So, the bulk concentration is same. So, rate at bulk concentration is same. So, this also will be a behavior which is very similar to eta versus phi. So, let us say that we do experiments at two different length L 1 and L 2 and we say that R observed 1 by R observed 2 that is at two different length. If this ratio is unity, we are in this particular region. But on the other hand, if this ratio R observed 1 by I R observed 2 is L 2 by L 1. Okay, is L 2 by L 2 by uh, uh, L 1. Why L 2 by L 1? Because from our definition this is strictly speaking eta 1 by eta 2, but eta is inversely proportional to Thiele modulus. So, phi 2 by phi 1 and phi 2 by phi 1 is nothing but L 2 by L 1. So, if we get ratio of two observed rates related to L 2 by L 1, we can say that we are in this particular diffusion diffusion based uh, uh, regime. Okay. There is another, another approach also by using what is called as observable Thiele modulus. So, to do that, let us go back to our definition of Thiele modulus for first order reaction. For first order reaction, we said this is or phi square is L k v L square k v by d a e. Okay. Now, our R observed is eta into k v into c a b, okay. k v into c a b. So, for k v, for k v which we which we may not know, let us put this as eta phi square d a e by L square from this particular equation into C A B. So, let us rearrange this equation little bit L square R observed by d A E into C A B as eta into phi square. Now, what is this quantity? What is this quantity L square R observed by by d A into C A B? This quantity is similar to our Thiele modulus. Why? Because we can write this R observed. See, we, we earlier defined our true Thiele modulus as L square K V by d A E. So, let us write k v by d a e as k v by d a b divided by c a b. So, if we now look at this, this Thiele modulus is nothing but L square r of c a b divided by d a e. This quantity over here that we have got is very similar to this quantity except instead of R C A B in our true Thiele modulus, we have R observed or in other words, we can treat L square by R observed 
uh, divided by d a e into c a b as observable Thiele modulus phi or phi phi g square as it is also sometimes referred to as. So, this is an observable quantity. Why is this an observable uh, uh, quantity? It is observable quantity because we, we know exactly what is the half width of the catalyst. We have observed or measured the rate of reaction. We know what is the bulk concentration and we presumably have done some diffusion characterization of the catalyst. So, we know d a e also. So, all these four quantities are actually observable and so this observable Thiele modulus is eta into phi square. Now, how will this how will this change actually as as uh, 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 Thiele modulus or as the experiments are conducted. So, this if if for example, if phi is less than 0 0.3 let us say okay, then we know eta is close to close to unity and therefore, eta phi square our phi g square eta phi square will be very much less than 1, because phi square will be square of this number which is already small. So, that will be very much less than 1. Let us say that if phi is very much greater than 3, okay. what is very much is all relative, but if phi is very much greater than 3. So, let me put this, then what do we get for phi g square? eta is 1 over phi into phi square. So, phi or in other words very much greater than 1 for sure. So, in other words we will know whether we are working under diffusional limitations or not by conducting an experiment measuring the rate of reaction calculating the observable Thiele modulus and if its value is very small that means, we are in a reaction controlled regime. If the value is very much greater than 1, we know that we are in a diffusion control regime. So, this is how we can experimentally find out without knowing the kinetics of the process. The whole idea of doing this was that we earlier uh, to calculate this Thiele modulus phi square we need to know for example, <coughs> what is the true kinetics, but to measure true kinetics we must carry experiments which are not under under a kinetically controlled regime. Now, how do we know that a priori? This is how we know that. That is if your observable modulus and here there is no mention of any kinetic rate constant or any such value these are all purely measurable quantities without knowing about the kinetics of the reaction. So, if that value is less than 1, we have a reaction controlled regime. If that value is very much greater than 1, we have diffusion controlled regime. So, you must carry out your experiments where the observable Thiele modulus is very much less than 1. So, that whatever is the rate of reaction that you get is a true kinetic rate and then you can find the activation energy, true kinetic activation energy, true order of reaction or whatever may be the expression for that particular particular rate. With that, we will stop for today by concluding the discussion on diffusion, internal diffusion and reaction for an isothermal case. We will bring in external diffusion and see how external diffusion combines with internal diffusion to create rates of reactions which can be truly different than the true kinetics of the process. This discussion is for the next session and then we will relax the final constraint we had namely the temperature 
effects or the reaction is occurring under isothermal condition, we will relax that also and look at non isothermal behavior. Thank you.